today we have Miss Erin Marie Hogan and you know she is definitely climbing the ladder to fame you know Miss Erin um, I have read that you have been doing this um, acting singing and dancing pretty much all your life um, from I think it's IMDB it says you actually started at three years old um, <laughs> I, how, how did that happen um, we just had a really music-friendly school, I think, and we used to sing, like, songs with my teacher and her guitar when I was in preschool and all the way until I was older, and in preschool one day, I guess I just decided to make everybody do a show, and so I just built a stage and I made everybody stand on it, and they were really mad at me. But that was the first time I remember like singing um, at all, really. Right. And so I just, I always sang and I always, um, we had a school play and they just offered me like a big part. I guess everybody was scared to take it. And I was sick, so I came back there like, you want this part? I was like, yeah, I can't believe nobody took this. Right. So um, it just kind of happened. It was just something that I, I liked to do. Once, as soon as I knew about it, then I started doing it. So. Right, and then if I remember correctly, at five you started dancing. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I started ballet and tap, and um, and then later I started jazz and hip hop and and all that stuff. But um, as a kid, I went to a really strict ballet conservatory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that can be a good thing, though. I mean it's not necessarily all bad. Um, so because of all of that that happened while you were younger, do you think? You know, not really get religious on you, but um, because of all that happening, do you think, you know, compared to what you're doing now, do you think that was kind of a uh, something to um, and I forgot the word to actually say that this is your calling and what you're supposed to do. Um, do you think, or maybe? Yeah, I I mean I think so. I didn't really learn how to do anything else. I mean, I, I know how to do other things. I had to right. do school and right. everything. But, right. um, you know, I just, I don't have as much interest in a lot of other things. And my, my parents are really supportive. Um, my mom was into music as a kid and, um, it just, it, I, can't, I really can't see myself doing anything else except maybe working with animals later in life. But, um, there's there's just not anything else I'm interested in right now, and that's that's probably why I think it was instilled in me really early. Right, right. So, um, as we mentioned, you're you're an actress. Um, probably, in my opinion, the most popular movie you've been in has been Paranormal Entity, which is basically a parody of Paranormal Activity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess that's going to be a good movie to be remembered for, maybe. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's something to be remembered for. I'll take it. Right. right <laughs> understood. Um, now, what, how did you feel about doing that movie? Um, I mean, was it one of these things to where you just went in and... I mean, because apparently, you know, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room and some of the scenes toward the end there. Um, was it kind of like one of these things where you kind of felt uncomfortable doing some of those scenes or was it just kind of like well this is part of the story and since I'm an actress you know I'm just gonna go ahead and do it or I mean what what's your feelings of that um it was it was a little bit uncomfortable at first I had only I don't I hadn't ever done nudity um I'd only done like um lingerie bikinis things like that but uh, to be honest, I didn't think anybody would see it. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> and, um, and then on, on top of that, I kind of... I just didn't... I, I figured this is another thing to do. It's a, it's a feature, and this is an opportunity I should take. And there's... Um, in what I read, not in the final product, but in what I read, there was no sexual nature to anything or anything like that. So um, nudity, I don't have an issue with. Um, but when it gets sexual, I get I get a little weird about it, and 
and I'm not really into doing those things. So it, it was uncomfortable because it was kind of the first time I'd done it, but um, you know, by by the time we got to the final scene, I really wasn't all that concerned about it. I'd been right. running around in underwear at the you know, the rest of the shoot. So right. <laughs> right. Understood. Um now the new movie well, I don't know if you would call it a movie per se. It's, I guess it's more of a short, but the newest feature that you've been in um, is Zombies and Assholes. Um, yeah. <laughs> obviously, there's going to be a difference in the two movies. Um, what, what, what's your views on that movie? And necessarily, you know, was it just another, another piece to put on your resume? Or did you actually have fun with this one? Um... I had a lot of fun with it, actually. When I first auditioned for it, I wasn't sure about it. They called me in for a part that I didn't fit at all. Um, and then they called me and gave me a different part. And they're like, well, but it's a bigger part. It's a bigger part. And I was like, uh, okay, whatever. Sure. Um, but when I met everybody, they were so funny. And comedy is so out of my comfort zone. I never do it. <laughs> right. And so it was... But it was still, you know, there there was blood and screaming and stuff, so it, it was still kind of in my genre that I'm used to, but a little bit outside, so um, it was mostly intimidating, but right. but everybody was um, pretty cool, and there were a couple, like, stand-up comics, and they were just cracking jokes the whole time, so it was pretty... Right. It was, it was pretty fun, and the shoot was pretty efficient. It didn't drag on forever like some shoots do, so it was a fun. It was a fun shoot, and um, I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I don't ever do comedy. I don't think I'm funny at all. Right. But um, at the premiere, people laughed, so that's good. <laughs> right. Right. Um, now I have watched um, some segments from the movie, and it seemed you know with comparing how you're speaking now and how you were in the movie, it seems like there's a different personality there. Yeah. I mean, do you get that a lot too? Or, I mean, do people automatically assume that you're just stuck up and better than everyone because you're in movies and all, or? Yeah, um, they kind of do, and then on top of that, people also want to randomly talk to me as if I've become Angelina Jolie, which I haven't. Right. And <laughs> So it's it's really weird to get messages from people who like, I didn't even talk to in high school, like, hey, we should reconnect. And I'm like, I didn't even know you. And they're like, why are you so stuck up? And I'm like, because I never knew you. Right, right, understood. <laughs> and, you know, that this could be a good transition to go into talking about your, your singing. Um, you're actually fronting two bands. Um, is that kind of the same thing? Because a lot of times whenever I go to concerts, um, being that I've been in school for acting myself, you know, a lot of times you, because of everything that's going on, you can't always stop and talk to people because you have to get off stage and get to the back and um, things like that. And even though you want to stop and speak to people, um, you know, you can. And sometimes, you know, from the audience standpoint, that may allude to that to the possibility of you being stuck up, but it's not the case. Um, do you find the same thing happening with you, you know, with the acting has and has the singing? Um. Or, you know, as far as people thinking you're stuck up. It's it's been okay with the singing. Um, a lot of people think I'm stuck up with the acting, but it's, um, you know, it's it's better than it was because I'm in LA where everybody is acting or stuck up or bold. So, <laughs> right. But um, with the singing, it it hasn't been a huge issue, mostly because um, I don't really want to mess with the rest of the band's equipment. And um, so I've asked them, you know, what can I take off? What can I, you know, put up? What can I break down? And um, everybody's always been capable of kind of doing their own stuff. And as the singer... I have a wireless mic, so I have to take, you know, the thing that sends the, right. <laughs> um, the, the sound, the thing that receives the sound, my mic stand, and my mic. So right. um, I, I have more time, I think, than most of the band does to talk to people. 
um, just because I don't have that much to break down, and I don't really want to mess up anybody's stuff by dropping it. <laughs> right, understood, understood. Yeah. We,